most interesting experiment today was into our minds, I think, because uh, we learned quantum mechanics uh, okay, many years ago, and uh, getting used to the Pauli matrices and the algebra of Pauli matrices and how this leads to, to all these paradoxes of quantum mechanics is something that needs some exercise and uh, we just realized today. If you apply some concept to a single qubit, you get some results, and then you would think that if you do the same on two qubits, oh, no way. Um, we did this exercise about the, um, the, the correlations, and we learned how to compute the Pauli correlators for uh, uh, one uh, bell state and uh, a normal state, you say. And then we did all this table, and we learned that uh, how to distinguish these two kinds of states, and uh, it was a very, very nice impression. And uh, I'm uh, really curious to go back to this teleportation experiment um, exercise, because uh, yes, we did it, we learned how to do it, and uh, uh, Christoph was giving us, is the fr freshest one in the group for it. <laughs> 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 He gave us uh, the right way to, to, to teleport a bit from Alice to Bo. And, uh, but still, I, I think I have to think a bit about that. Uh, it was a great experience to work a couple of hours. The interface is great. Uh, the simulate stuff is uh, very quick. And, uh, but also, the, maybe I conclude by saying that uh, to a computational scientist who is used to get to the last digit uh, the exact result to see that in <laughs> running on the true computer you get 0457 instead of 05 and this is a good thing um, is a kind of a shock <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward <coughs> to the consequences of that on our society <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> so, hi, I'm Peter, and uh, I study physics as well, but it's uh, never been as far as it gets to quantum computing and the other stuff, but that's gauge theory. And so we were, Fabia and me were quite thankful to Katarina, who knew uh, quite well about the theory. Um, yeah, so let us just show, let us just look at uh, what we have done in this short time. We hope to manage more. So we just uh, dealt with um, tutorial number one and tutorial number two. Um, in tutorial number number one, uh, there we have checked how the excited state um, decays. So you would um, typically um, think that uh, it decays in an exponential fashion. So the excited state you get with applying x to the ground state. And then uh, what you do is you just apply it up to 38 times, more often it is not possible, and then you check how the decay actually um, yeah, happens. And well, usually it should decay, so what you see on the y-axis is the overlap essentially with the, uh, with the first excited state, like the percentage of how much it is excited. And uh, yeah, you see that uh, it should actually go to zero, but you just see the beginning of the exponential decay, which, well, we cannot really see whether it is exponential or not, but we can imagine that it will be. Um, in tutorial number two, what we had to do was um, to entangle Q qubits. So one state we had to um, generate was the, the superposition, one over square root of two, uh, one zero plus zero one, and this we try to realize by um, first um, having um, by applying h uh, to to one ground state to, to be equally in both if you think about the bell sphere and the other one should have been excited such that we could get a one in the in the other state I'm not so sure about but I'm <laughs> making sense right now anyway you have to use the c not and then what you have seen is that, um, so you are in, in the states either 1, 0 or 0, 1, which is uh, shown in 
in this in the upper part, and then we also have to correlate um, like the zero zero bits such that whenever so so you want them essentially when they slip from zero to one or from one to zero you want them to all slip together and you also see it realized here if it wouldn't be entangled then you would have an equal distribution um, yeah what we also checked was uh, whether um, whether there is a difference in applying x like twice x should be the identity or um, whether this leads to a different uh, result than simply applying the identity, like just checking whether um, the operations that we are allowed to do in this interface, whether they somehow um, differ. So we thought that applying xx would lead to more error than applying the identity. So what we checked was, um, uh, so you that which was now really quickly arranged, but essentially xx on the ground state uh, would mean that uh, we should, uh, sorry, I think I'm, yeah, it's the identity, so you see, usually it stays in 0, 0. In some cases, however, uh, the first bit remained in 1, 0, and when you use the identity, it's essentially the the same outcome qualitatively, the numbers differ a bit. We thought that using identity is better than xx, but it is not. So <laughs> this is uh, yeah. what you have done. <laughs> Don't do nothing. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, I guess this was it in this short amount of time, and we really enjoyed working with the interface because it's quite intuitive. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, thank you. So good afternoon, everybody. So our group worked on the hydrogen molecule. So the idea is basically that we have two atoms of hydrogen, which comes both with uh, one electron. And these electrons can hop from uh, one orbital to another, and also interact between each other. There is one degree of freedom, is that these two uh, atoms can, are separated by a length r. And so this can change. Um, basically, the Hamiltonian can be uh, rewritten in this form. Um, of course, at the very be beginning, it's worse than this because you have to consider all these interactions. Um, but basically, it boils down to, to this, and we, we will need to actually uh, compute the expectation value of um, all these uh, Pauli operators to then. Um, Use, uh, make use of the variation and principle to, to compute the, the ground state energy, which will be given by, by this formula, and where we actually have another degree of freedom, which is this um, that, um, uh, variable theta uh, that we change. So we actually uh, try to reproduce what we did in this paper, where basically here it's the value of theta, and then we see this oscillation in the expectation value. And, um, and in this graph, uh, there is the other three parameter, uh, R. So from this, uh, we should be able to, to actually compute the ground set energy. Um, so this is actually the experiment that, that they did. Uh, so they apply a full sequence of pulses to, to reproduce uh, this, well, the mechanics behind it. And this is. Uh, actually is um, uh, um, another way the V sequence can be written with uh, um, uh, such, such operations and we are actually interesting, interested in reproducing these results with the quantum experience so we have to, to, tra to translate uh, these operations into what can be done with the quantum experience so basically probably uh, gates X, Y, Z, Toffoli gates and Atema gates and so on. So we actually have to, to replace them. And this is actually what this could look like. Um, so which is quite <laughs> complex. Uh, uh, but we just have to, to do the map. And we unfortunately didn't have time to, to go 
uh, up to the, the very end. But um, if you are to, to, to use this circuit and then modify the way you measure to actually, actually compute uh, the correlations, um, so the expectation value of xx, yy, and zz, and so on, uh, you will then be able to, to implement all of this into the Newtonian and, uh, and compute the, the fundamental energy. Yeah. And I think that's it. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so we were actually working on the exact same uh, um, tutorial. Um, it took us quite a while to figure out um, these, uh, how you combine the available operators to the ones that we actually Neat, as you just uh, said, um, and actually, we till the end we didn't fully understand, but we were very lucky that we, we got the partial answers from, from him. Um, so just right before the uh, the basic deadline um, was reached, uh, we were able to compute the first <laughs> the first uh, expectation value uh, or the first energy value for theta equals zero. And uh, yeah, so we would now invest more time to basically calculate um, this energy for all the other values to get uh, to the minimum energy and basically define our uh, state. Um, so yeah, as I said, we didn't have time to do a proper presentation. That's okay. Um, thank you. Well, I take the time to just say that I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be here. I guess my colleagues as well mm -hmm. from Burr. And what we did, we uh, made a short experiment on the GHZ state. Uh, as it was stated in the tutorial, uh, defining uh, three connected systems with X and Y that can take values from plus or minus one, and then trying to find a solution to equations, which unfortunately we forgot to put here, but they look like x, y, 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 x, y, and so on equals to 1, while x, x, x would be equals to minus 1, which in classical terms is not solvable because if you just multiply the first three equations, all the y's will go out because they're squared, and you will see that x, x, x is can be only be equal to 1. Now, the quantum uh, nature of these uh, qubits in this case allow us to actually find the solution to this similar unsolvable problem. Uh, here you can see the scheme. The one in blue is a preparation of the state mentioned here. And for this state, we measured the following three uh, things, like x, x, x. So for example, here, uh, the x values at this table. Well, the scheme is shown by x, y, y, y but we will see here it's for x, x, x. Uh, the different variations, you can imagine the zero scale. Uh, the, the result, the probability to get them is shown here. And then what you see is that the highest probability are where x, x, x is equal to minus 1. So the combinations with a odd number of ones. And therefore, we can calculate all the rest, basically the same table. We get the mean value, and we get the answer, which is here. So. We kind of found that our system is indeed integral. Okay, thank you. Um, hello again. I also want to thank uh, for the possibility that we could come here. You may have to say that our background was not uh, physics, so we were electrical engineers, and we had a great opportunity to somehow uh, go back and uh, travel in time somehow to our undergrad studies where we had some. Uh, quantum mechanics, but uh, not so much. So we spent a lot of time working with the tutorials uh, that were online, and uh, I found them quite helpful. Uh, it's really nice with the interface that you have to try these things out with, also with the examples um, that you provided. But uh, yeah, this also cost quite some time, so we, we were working on these uh, tutorials and then found out that we didn't start the exercise yet. So. <coughs> Uh, we really did that in a short amount of time, but we were also working on the same uh, two examples that uh, you guys presented and tried to first figure out uh, the T1 DK time, which uh, you see here. So we had a couple of samples with uh, different um, amount of idle gates in between 
and we try to fit the curve to that in order to figure out what the um, what the decay time is uh, in terms of gates or gate delays. Um, now, because we do not have so many samples here, yeah, I'm not sure whether it is really accurate, but we have something <laughs> which is in the order of 30 gates. Um, I don't know whether that is correct or not. That's the 27 degrees of the ground. After 60. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the error is quite large. So. <laughs> 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 We should maybe not um, <laughs> take this number. Uh, <laughs> or, uh, let's take this number with a grain of salt and let's just say we need more data to uh, have it more accurately or have a more accurate number. But uh, yeah. And then the second uh, example, we do not have a picture for that, but we actually also saw that if you correlate um, a um, qubit which is in uh, Superposition, which with a uh, qubit that is not in superposition with uh, next with this XOR gate, uh, you basically see that two states have a probability of almost uh, 50 percent, and the others are very very small probability to be, um, which is basically just a matter of error. Thank you. And uh, among the things that. Uh, we all did and tried to um, kind of investigate. I wanted to show, share a an interesting result, maybe that was not mentioned so far. So here, um, I tried to do quickly another comparison, but I think the processor went down. But I this kind of this ten idle gates on on every processor at the same time. And uh, just to see where the system ends up being at the end. And uh, so <laughs> the, <laughs> the chance you're going to get uh, <laughs> your, your, your process in the same state you put it after 10 rounds is 50%, more or less. Which I guess makes sense. Uh, Given that I think I, I saw similar numbers, that a, a possibility that the, a single bit just flips is of the order of five percent or something like that in ten ten idle steps. Uh, then you add some <coughs> some res less reliable uh, qubits that are failing more often, which are by the way, supposed to be not, I mean, by the specs they're supposed to be very similar, but they, this four and five seem to fail more often. Uh, so you end up with this large error rate, and you could imagine that it kind of scales with the number of qubits you try to run. So that's maybe uh, one thing to think about. All right. More or less it. Thank you so much.